Hello everyone, today I'll be discussing the importance of performing both LD50 and DD50 potency experiments using my tarantula venom case study as an example. Lethal dose 50% or LD50 is the amount of a substance required to kill 50% of a test population. For example, the LD50 for this snake's venom would be how much venom it takes to kill half of the test mice population. Previous studies using LD50 measures have helped determine how predatory traits evolve, such as our previous study that showed how the number of taxa in a snake species diet determines its venom specificity towards its prey. There are numerous other studies that used LD50s to demonstrate similar results in a range of venomous species, not just snakes. However, another measure of potency, the effective dose 50% or ED50, is a better reflection of how venom functions in nature. ED50 is similar to LD50, but instead measures the amount of a substance required to disable or immobilize rather than kill 50% of the test mice population. This is important because the role of venom is not to kill instantly, but rather to rapidly disable prey so that the venomous organism gains the advantage. Additionally, many prey species, like the California ground squirrel, have evolved resistance to their predator's venom. The squirrel may be immobilized by the venom for a period of time, but will not die from the direct activity of the venom, hence why ED50 is a better reflection of how venom functions in nature. Here I use ED50s and LD50s to determine the efficacy or efficiency of a series of tarantula venoms. Can we use LD50s and ED50s efficiently to investigate the potentially prey-specific effects of tarantula venoms? Or in other words, can we use ED50s and LD50s to determine if tarantulas have evolved toxins that specifically target their natural prey, or do they produce a more universal venom, causing generalised effects in most or all prey types? We used six different tarantula species venoms for this pilot case study. The main reasons we decided to work with tarantulas are that tarantulas are understudied and they provide relatively large amounts of venom compared to many other venomous invertebrates. We tested the potency of each tarantula venom on two types of prey. Crickets, which are orthopteran insects, a group of arthropod commonly eaten by tarantulas in the wild, and woodlice, which are one of the few representatives of terrestrial crustaceans, a rather uncommon prey for tarantulas. For each tarantula species venom, we tested four different raw venom dilutions on both prey species in cohorts of 10, using 5 microliters of venom solution per injection. Note that the following graphs I will be discussing show the percentage of prey disabled or dead on the y-axis, with 0 meaning no disabled or dead specimens and 100 meaning all disabled or dead. The time points that deaths were recorded are on the x-axis, and each tarantula species venom has a colour associated with it for viewing purposes. The two graphs shown here are the 2% venom concentration ones, crickets on the left, woodlice on the right. The results you see here are similar across the four venom concentrations tested. LD50 values recorded at a single time point, in this case the 24 hour time point, do not capture the complex nature of venom. In fact, LD50 is an inappropriate tool to investigate the functional efficacy of a venom in situ. If we consider only the 24 hour time point, which is the case for most LD50s in the literature, we would consider that the venom of tarantulas causes more harmful effects to woodlice than to crickets, and therefore that tarantulas have not evolved prey-specific toxins to target common prey types in their diet, but instead cause more generalised effects on all prey types. However, our experiment shows that the crickets are disabled more rapidly and more consistently by the venom of tarantulas compared to woodlice, but the crickets recover around 2 to 24 hours after venom injection, while woodlice gradually die off over a period of 24 hours. These results tell a very different story, that the tarantulas may in fact have evolved prey-specific toxins to disable rather than kill common prey types found in their diet. This matches the patterns observed in other venomous predators which were also found to have prey-specific toxins, such as the previously mentioned snakes. In a tarantula-led predation event, the disabling power of the venom is essential, but killing is not. As once prey is immobilized, the tarantula can easily crush their prey with the stabbing motion of their large schlissery or fangs. Also, a predation event is concluded in a matter of seconds or minutes, not hours, which leaves little time for a venom to cause mortality. 
do conclude, ED50s in relation to time, how fast 50% of the prey are disabled, are the more ecologically relevant measure of venom potency, and studying venom by performing both LD50 and ED50 potency experiments can give us a better understanding of how predatory traits evolve, quite like these gentlemen needing both perspectives to get the whole picture. Thank you.